You may think you've heard everything about the romance of Prince William and Kate Middleton by now, but as always, best-selling author Christopher Anderson has the real inside story. He tells all in his new book, William and Kate, A Royal Love Story. Great to have you with us, Christopher. Great to be here, Rebecca. Such a great book. Thank you. With Thank so you. many new details. And right. one of the interesting things is this whole breakup that took place between Will and Kate in 2007. Right. Explain to the viewer what prompted the breakup. Well, I think it'll surprise a lot of people who was behind the breakup. Uh, William uh, was off to the army in 2007, and uh, he'd been with Kate for a number of years, and she was expecting him on Valentine's Day of 2007 to propose. Uh, he didn't because he felt he was 25 years old and perhaps a little too young, but she needed a commitment. Mm -hmm. And so he said, well, he went to his father, Prince Charles, and said, I'm not, I don't know what to do, what should I do? And, and Prince Charles, who is very, very fond of... Uh, Kate said, look, it's not fair to keep stringing her along like this. If you're not going to ask her to marry you now, break it off. So Kate is working at a, as an accessories buyer at a, at a chain called Jigsaw, it's a clothing chain in, in London, and all of a sudden she gets a, ce a cell phone call. And uh, it's, it's William on April 11th, 2007, calling to say it was over. She went into a back room, her co-workers heard her very emotional call, so he basically broke up with her over the cell phone. Now her reaction, I think, is the way she handled it really says a lot about the kind of woman she is. I mean, she set out, really, to win him back. She uh, lost weight, she worked out, she joined an all-women's uh, rowing team called the Sisterhood to, to race across the English Channel, and she dated a lot of really eligible young guys. She that, was out and about photographed oh around boy, London. With her sister, Pippa, mm -hmm. and, and they were this kind of gl glamorous uh, sisters on, out on the town, and, and the thing was, William knew a lot of the young men she was now dating, and so he went on a sort of a drinking binge for a while, but he got jealous very quickly, and, and within a few weeks, actually, they were back together. A, a few weeks later, they're back together. Yes. From the picture you paint, Kate Middleton's mom mm -hmm. has sort of an idea about making this relationship happen. Well, look, you know, if you're going to sort of, you know, set your sights on some guy, he might as well be the future king of England. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think a lot of mothers felt that set way. Set the bar low. Uh, yeah, well, okay. yeah. So she, uh, you know, and, and again, you got uh, Carol Middleton, Kate's mom, is a remarkable woman. I mean, she comes from a family of coal miners. You know, she was a stewardess for British Airways, and she took this talent for making children's goodie bags for children's parties and built that into an empire called Party pieces, which supplies, you know, she made millions, really, basically. She's sort of the Martha Stewart of kiddie parties in England. And, uh, and she saw that, that her daughter was going to uh, uh, go to uh, Edinburgh University, but when William decided he was going to go to St. Andrews University in Scotland, uh, Kate's mother, Carol, said, well, why don't you go to St. Andrews? Mm -hmm. So she enrolled, and they met right away, Kate and, and William, and within a very short period of time, uh, they were friends, and it grew from there. There's also in your book a lot about how Princess Di's death mm -hmm. has sort of plagued Prince William yeah. and, and how he has this recurring nightmare about Kate. Right. And, you know, William and, and Harry have always blamed the press for their mother's death. It was a drunk driver behind the wheel, but the paparazzi were chasing Diana through the streets of Paris. So he's always had this recurring uh, nightmare that the same fate would befall Kate. And there are a number of instances that I recount in the book, uh, really harrowing car chases, where the, where the British press and the foreign press are pursuing Kate through the streets of London. And, uh, and so uh, he, that was another factor, that he was always worried that, that she would, uh, you know, uh, die in a car crash or be injured in a car crash. Now that she's a member of the royal family, or will be very shortly, she's entitled to royal protection. So that problem is not sure. solved, but it's a little less. So, yes, and, and you make that point that yeah. for years while they've been in this dating relationship, right. she's had to endure right. essentially her own lifestyle without the security exactly. of the royal family, but now she will be entitled to it. Exactly. And you know what really makes it remarkable is that she has never, you won't, you won't even find her scowling at the camera. You know, she has handled it with grace and poise. She's so a remarkable kind of resilience in terms of the press. And that's why I think that when, as, it, as they progress and, they, and she eventually becomes the Queen of England, I think she'll be, uh, she'll be okay. She'll be okay. And, and yeah. as you also point out, in terms of the UK and, and how people perceive mm. her, She's never put a wrong foot forward. Exactly, and she's done everything that's been asked of her. I mean, she learned, she let Prince Philip teach her how to shoot. She, you know, <laughs> she charmed Charles and Camilla, which was very important. Uh, even though she's very allergic to horses, I mean, <laughs> seriously allergic, she's gone to all of William's polo matches and stood there on the sidelines. I she's, mean, she's done really a lot right. She's made the effort. Christopher Anderson, thank you so much. Fantastic book. Thank you.